everyone. Thanks for joining me for another installment of First Chapter Friday. My name is Lucy and I'm really excited to share with you today the first chapter of a book called The Best at It by Malik Pencholi. This is a middle grade book and it is about a boy named Rahul who is a gay Indian American boy who is about to start seventh grade. So he has some apprehension about entering into middle school. He's worried about people who have picked on him before, and he's just kind of trying to figure out who he is. So he turns to one of his favorite people in the world, his grandfather, whom he calls Bai. He turns to Bai for some advice, and Bai tells him, just find one thing that you're really good at and become the best at it. So those four words, the best at it, they just kind of get stuck in Rahul's brain as he's starting school. And he is convinced if he can find his thing that he will really shine at, then all of the problems that he has and all the things that are bothering him will go away. So that is where this book starts. It's a very funny book. Um, there's a lot of humor in it. And if you like real life fiction and funny stories, um, this might be a book for you. So I'm going to start with chapter one. Chapter one. Chelsea and I are playing Just Dance in the basement when my grandfather Bai calls down the stairs. It's the last day of your vacation. You kids need to get out of the house. Maybe later I yell back up. The song comes to a finish and Chelsea throws her arms in the air and bows with a flourish. We're just in the middle of something right now. You've been locked away in that basement all summer, he calls back down. Then his voice grows sly. How about we have a race around the neighborhood? Should we go up? Chelsea tugs on her t-shirt to air out the sweat. I love hanging out with my grandfather. I really do. But lately, I've been avoid pl avoiding playing out in the street. I mean, who wants to risk running into someone from school over the summer? Isn't nine months of the year enough? I bet I can beat you in a race from our house to Mr. McCarter's Jeep, Bai says, refusing to give up. Then he pauses and adds, if you win, I'll teach you how to pop a wheelie in my wheelchair. I look at Chelsea with my eyebrows raised. Bai's wheelies are pretty awesome. Plus, we both know he'll be home alone all day when we head back to school tomorrow. It'd be nice to spend some time with him. She shrugs as if to say, why not? Fine, you're on. We clamber up the stairs. I call referee, she yells as we follow by out the front door. Before we make our way down into the street, I do a quick sweep of the neighborhood. Except for dad's band rehearsing in our garage, it's a ghost town out here. Probably because it's August in Indiana and like 200 degrees out. The race is on. I hop up and down to loosen my limbs as Bai wheels in next to me. Whoever touches the Jeep first wins. He tugs on his wool hat and adjusts his cardigan, his eyes twinkling in my direction. Even though it's sweltering, Bai never strays from his signature look. He has a Mr. Rogers worthy supply of cardigans. I think all Indian grandfathers do. On your marks, Chelsea's voice slices through the thick summer air. I curl my lip and throw my best, you better watch out, look in Bai's direction. The sun gleaming off his wheelchair stings my eyes. Stop, wait, I can't see, I yell. Rahul, Chelsea suppresses a laugh as I bat away at the green and black sunspots dancing in front of my face. Sorry, sorry, I shove my glasses back up onto my sweaty nose. The green lawns and giant oak trees lining our streets come back into focus. Chelsea runs her hands through her short blonde hair and starts again. On your marks. One more second. I bend over to fiddle with my shoelace. I think this knot's a little loose. Bai raises his hand. Excuse me, Chelsea. Are there rules against this kind of stalling? If there aren't, there should be. She shakes her head at me. Your shoes are fine, Ra. Plus, my dad's going to be here soon to pick me up. Now get set. Hold up. Now I've gone and untied the whole thing. 
go. I retie it just in time to see Bai flying past the starting line. He slams his hands over and over onto the tires of his wheelchair with lightning speed. No fair, I yell, taking off, but he's already ahead of me. Very fair, he shouts, throwing his head over his shoulder to shoot me a devilish grin. He bursts into a full-throated laugh. Bai has the world's best laugh. It's like two scoops of mint double chocolate chip ice cream and a family trip to Disney World all rolled into one. I think your other shy shoe is untied too, Bai hollers back at me. Huh? I stop to look. Chelsea face palms. Really raw? Oldest trick in the book. Bai might be 72 and in a wheelchair, but he's competitive as all get out. I bite my lower lip and take off for a second time, pumping my arms like a madman. You might be thinking, how on earth could a 12-year-old kid not beat a 72-year-old man in a wheelchair? Well, you haven't met by. He maneuvers that chair like it's a Lamborghini. We also have an agreement. He doesn't baby me just because I'm 12, and I don't coddle him just because he's got 60 years on me. In fact, he's the one who insisted I call him Bai. It's pronounced kind of like Bai, B-U-Y, and it means older brother. When I asked him why, he said, because you should always be able to tell me anything that's on your mind, as though I'm your older brother, which is weird because I prefer that my younger brother, Arun, not tell me anything at all. I'm just a few feet behind him now, and Bai whips his head over his shoulder again and taunts me. It's just to Mr. McCarter's Jeep. You better catch up. You're going down, I scream, surprised at how out of breath I'm getting. How is he going this fast? Dad's band down the street is scoring our every move, and the music pumps through my straining muscles. Chelsea's chanting, go, 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 in the background. We're neck and neck now. I squeeze every last ounce out of energy into my legs. The trees are streaks of green and brown on either side of me. I narrow my eyes onto the Jeep parked across the intersection of Oak Street, the finish line. And then suddenly a voice shatters my concentration. Oh my God, it snickers. This has got to be the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. Oh no, I know that voice. And that is the end of chapter one of The Best of It. And if that sounded like something that you want to read further, it is a really great story. It's a good, um, it's got nice family dynamics, it's a really nice friendship between Raul and his grandfather, but also a really good tale about learning to be yourself um, and heading off to middle school. So if that sounds like something that appeals to you, this book is available um, on aadl.org, or you can get it through Overdrive and read it that way. So I hope you give it a try.